Hey Fluffies, welcome back to Pink Stylist Plays. Today I'm going to be playing The Beginner's Guide and I'm really excited for this one because from what I can gather it was made by the same people, the same team that made The Stanley Parable and you all know how much I bloody love that game. It was so weird, so sarcastic and it, it, it's me. I love it. <laughs> And I want to say a special thank you to Kfate on YouTube who requested that I play this game. I wouldn't have heard about it otherwise, so thank you so much for that. I know fluff all about this game, but if it's anywhere near as good as the Stanley Parable, then it's got to be amazing. So, we won't find out until we play, so let's do this. Okie dokie, so here we are, the beginner's guide. <laughs> Begin. Oh, bright light. Hello. Oh, I don't know what to expect. Okay, audio's on. It's good. So far, so good. Ha! <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Oh, hello. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. Mm. My name is Davey <laughs> Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Right. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009, at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the oh. first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys oh, yeah. the illusion that this actually is a desert up. town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of oh, Coda's weird. games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Oh, this so, is so weird. It's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to important games folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day he just stopped. Huh. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. Aww. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Aww. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's oh. about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. This is fascinating. As so each is game is not loading, a story? I'll show you the date that it was completed. Is this, this actually first true? one was made in November 2008. What a fascinating process, if that's the case. Oh. Oh, I want to talk for a second. Oh, this is interesting. So was that the... I know that... I think that was the creator's real name. So if that was the creator actually speaking of the Stanley Parable, then this could... I mean, this might be true. This might be some person called Coda's actual, like, games. Oh, I've got a gun! But why would he make just, like, start games and not finish them? Then again, this game is I do that to make a lot. From Whisper, and it's one oh. of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Oh, I can shoot! Ah, this is why I don't play shooting games! So. <laughs> oh... Okay, well I can't go that way. Can I shoot the blocks? I can't. Okay. Oh, what fun to be able to have like access to make this kind of stuff. God, I'd make such weird things. Oh. Okay. Do these open? 
I can't shoot anymore, huh? Security hole breached. Hostile alien life inbound. Well, I don't want to play a shooty game. It's it kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. Oh. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. Yeah. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I what think happened that we to should Coda, talk about then? his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Enemy force neutralized. Begin shooting at I love oh, how you wow. can see the bottom of the universe from this <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, this is so unusual. I love it. What? So what? What is... Oh, okay. Oh, you could have so much fun if you... Oh, if you could do this. What, what, what Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. <laughs> There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. No, I want to... Oh. Ah! I wanted to do it. Meh. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Ooh. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives... Whoa! Would you do it? Hush. Would you give yourself? Wow. I mean... I think I have to. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Hmm. Oh! Oh! Okay. Oh, look, it's the corridors! Oh, that's cool. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Oh, look. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just wow. had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, Something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental oh, designs. Wow. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after so leaving this strange, one behind. Isn't it? Oh. Oh, okay. The past was behind her. Okay. Oh, okay, I can move now. Yep. In this game, you oh, you have to walk backwards. Walk backwards. <gasps> oh, that's weird. I'm going to be saying that a lot. Oh, hang on. So how can I? Okay, right. We're going to do this. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Oh. Oh, is this original? Oh, my God. Okay. I, can't, I literally can't walk any other way. Oh, well. Oh. So on. it's a short and relatively minimalist oh. experiment <laughs> combining motion and narrative. Okay. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Yeah. Whoa. How will she find the strength? Can I go through that door? Oh! In front. Oh, the door's gone! To confront it's a short it. little thought. Oh. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Oh. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Oh. Spooky. Ah, oh, it's spooky. You are now entering... Ah. Oh! And that's it. 
<laughs> okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Okay. <laughs> what? December. Oh, Oftentimes, no, Koda would put no, bizarre no. titles like this one at the start of his games. <gasps> oh, look. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. Wow. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? Oh, just some people get like that. I mean, I get like that when I'm trying to come up with an idea for a makeup. That's why I don't tend to plan them very often, because I get bored and stop. And oh my god, I get an it. Absolute crawl, <laughs> the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. Yeah, like seriously, when I do, make, like if I plan a makeup show, I'll get bored, just scrap the idea and do something completely different. So I just don't plan anymore. I just do the makeup up as I go along. Oh. 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 Game filled with chairs except one chair is flat. You can strike to all the walls you should. You're given a medal. Stand on X. What's that say? Staring at a, a bear room for three that's hours? warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Wow. Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Oh, wow. That was... <laughs> oddly deep. Okay. Oh! Ready, set, fish! Okay. <laughs> this is... I, okay, I have literally no idea what to expect from this game at all. I mean, Stanley Parables had some kind of, like, boundaries, I guess. This is weird. Okay. Whoa! Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Click! Go ahead and see if you can solve it. Okay! Misty. So I can't get... Oh, wait, 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 can I go? Okay, I can't. Okay. I wonder if I can... Hang on, I wonder if, just out of curiosity, I wonder if I can shut myself in there. Ah, look! Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. <laughs> All right. Oh. I mean, kept it very minimal. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. All of them? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa, oh, hello. Oh, what? What the fluff? Are those all different, like, ways that? you can go? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game what? since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Bloody hell. Either way, I think that the point is the same, is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Look at it all. Bloody hell. Oh, back here again. Hello. Okay. You are now ex- Oh, exiting. Okay. Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Code of the Leaves' games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. Oh. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay, this is... 
Okay. <laughs> so very random. The great and lovely. D oh. 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 Okay. Oh. So Let's empty. talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Oh, I'm learning so much. This is nice. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, oh. and it has certain things that it does poorly. I wanna go there. One oh. of the things that it does very oh. well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms. Oh. It's just because he's working with what the engine Whoop. does well. Whoop. Oh, I can do this. Whoop. The tools available to the creator. <gasps> oh God! Oh God! The creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing oh, linear bugs. Oh God! I fell. Oh God! Wow. Oh, this is weird. Oh God! What? What? What are we doing? Are we just okay? Are we just doing this? <laughs> I kind of want to jump down all the way. Or is that cheating? Eh. Oh crap! Wow. It's like proper thought-provoking game, isn't it? Oddly inspirational, considering there's nothing here. Yep. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, overshot it! Ah! No, it There's a hole. I'm gonna jump in the hole. Where's the hole? Oh, it's not a hole. It's a oh fuck! Okay. Ah, you can't get in there. I mean. Oh, it's so lovely! Ha! Huh. Oh! Okay, wasn't expecting that. I want to go that way. Ah, oh, you won't let me go that way, mean. Oh! This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Huh. If you don't mind, I think we're going to skip that. Wow. Oh. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Nah. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. <laughs> Sounds like a fun friend. <laughs> Bloody hell, okay. It's just three dots again, that. It's the puzzle again. Flick. With the exact same solution as the last time. Okay. Flick. Flick. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Well, if he's making so many bloody games, surely it would just be like easy to copy and paste the same technique. I don't know. Maybe it's like a placeholder and he's going to put something else in it later on. Oh! Peoples with boxes. Hello. Oh! You there. Did you come Here, up from Kuda above? begins using a kind of dialogue system oh, that he fashioned there? out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. Yes, there was an enormous prison. I spent hours in it. Yes, there was these floating covered blocks. Two. 
that's the world above. You've been there. Oh, this is weird. Now, that, uh, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle, or I prefer not to tell you after we've only just met. Ha! Huh. What? But you, you don't understand. We're trapped here. That puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it. You think you want to get through it, but trust me, you don't. Let me describe it for you. Let me tell you all about what is over there. All right, I'll tell you how to solve it. Wonderful! Well? What is it? What's the answer? Please speak to me. Tell me how to escape. Tell me how to be free of this prison. I must know. It's the most important thing. There must be an ending. Ew, this is so weird. I'm going to say that a lot throughout these videos. I, now what? I'm sorry. I, 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 oh. Okay. Sorry. Bye bye. Hello, how did you get here? What was the puzzle you had to pass through? Was there a puzzle? Um. Yes? Do you want to know how to solve it? No, no, we actually find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Why would, there be, why would I care about the space between the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, if I, rem I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. I don't recall the space between the doors. I don't. Other than the corridor. But don't worry, I'm sure you'll visit again soon. Be sure to pay close attention. What? This bit? Alright. Okay. What's happening? And so we make oh. one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Oh, I'm feeling queasy. relaxing music though. Oh. Oh, this is nice. It's a lamppost. No shit. <laughs> okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. So an endpoint. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Right. Hang on. I think this could be a good point to pause and pick up in the next episode of this series because this, I don't know how long this could be. I mean, it could be like done in five minutes. I don't know, but we're not going to find out until we carry on playing it. But I'm going to put a pin in it for now and just talk about it for a second. Regardless of what this game turns out to be, I don't think it's got much to do with the Stanley Parable, other than the fact that I don't think you can guess where it's going to go. I don't know if there's going to be hidden secrets to the game. There might be. It might just be one long kind of story game, if that makes sense. Either way, if this game continues as it is, I, it's kind of, in a weird way, it's kind of like inspirational to like just get your creative juices flowing because seeing that many different things at once and different variations, granted, I don't like make games, but... This kind of thing's really good for, I don't know, just getting you out of, like, a writer's block scenario. Because right now, I'm just, I kind of want to sit down and just draw makeups and just try and be creative. Isn't that weird? I'm really excited to see where this game goes. But yeah, so I guess until the next part of this series, awesome possum. Bye, fluffies!